Okay. You good? Yep. All right. Amen. All right. So uh, we're, we're there, right? James chapter 5, verses uh, 13 to 15. Is anyone am among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make them well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Amen. And uh, this is, uh, I'm just thinking about like, about the, the past sermon that I preached. And it was like, this is a good follow-up to preaching on humility. You know, because prayer is really one of the ways that you can, you can show humility unto the Lord. I know I talked about, if you compare yourself to God, you realize how, how much you fall short. But also, if you were to think of always like, I got to pray about this, I got to pray about that. That's a sign of you showing humility. And because if you think about it, like, why would we pray? We'd pray, is, is God powerful? Is, is God more powerful than me? Right? If God's more powerful, power, more powerful than me, then I would ask the Lord to, hey, come through for me in this case. If you have pride, you'd be like, well, I don't really need to pray. I kind of got it on my own. You could say that someone is still a believer in Christ Jesus, but then doesn't really want to pray as much, right? Because, no, I, I got it. I don't need God's help. I, you know, I got this one. So, humility, a part of it, uh, is to honestly just always seeking the Lord for His power. Another thing is to always pray for the Lord's discernment. The Lord's wisdom. You think, no, I know, I know what the Bible says. You know, which is, amen, amen. You should read the Bible. The Bible does help change your heart and your mind. But a part of humility is to still, while you have a good grasp of what is right and what is wrong due to the Word, you should still ask the Lord to guide you in what you should be doing in whatever sort of circumstance that you're in. And maybe it's not a, a, whether it's something's good or evil. It could be just left or right or red and blue. It's not necessarily right or wrong. But through humility, we would want to go and pray about what are we to do. Amen? You know that, you know, if we think we could just comfort ourselves, like we have some sort of anxiety going on, we something depressed, something that, that, that's bothering our hearts or minds, something where it's like we're restless about it. A lot of times, it's, you know, it's normal that we want to just try to solve it on our own, on our, our, our own sort of uh, ability to, to think. And this is unfortunate that we don't always go to the Lord with our anxiety. We try to solve the problem ourselves, which is kind of like a part of what keeps the sustained anxiety, the sustained depression, the sustained sort of frustration in our life, is that we're trying to solve these things on our own. And prayer, through prayer, the Lord could soothe us and could relieve that sort of anxiety that we may have. You know, through prayer, you know, you recognize, honestly, that God is rich. He is beyond rich, right? And sometimes we think, well, I can figure out how to make money. I can figure out how to become wealthy on my own. When in reality, you could ask the Lord for it. You can ask the Lord for anything. Now, it's like some people say, like, oh, you know, health, health, wealth, prosperity, gospel. It's like the, the issue with it is if you think that you can't control God. We don't control God. But God is rich, and you could ask the Lord, hey, Lord, can you help, help provide for me? I want to provide for my family. I want to provide for, for the people around me. Help use my gifts so I could make money. You could help influence in a real, really powerfully in a real Christian way throughout the world through having money. You really can. Now, like I said, you don't control God, but you could always ask the Lord. right? And why would the Lord grant you this sort of gift of being wealthy? Because God is good. And you're his children. That could just be, we could just, it, that could just be like the main point of why the Lord may want to bless you. And through, also through prayer, we have to realize it is through prayer that we can become righteous. It's not in and of our own righteousness. Amen? It's not that we could make ourselves a better person. We could make ourselves into these, uh, uh, the image and likeness of Christ Jesus. Then self-righteousness is uh, a real a uh, big deal within the church. See, through self-righteousness, you know, we look at other people, we see them 
It's like, oh, you know, this person's below me. This person doesn't do as much as I do. This, like, this, honestly, there's Christians, unfortunately, that think, like, right here, me standing here and preaching is, like, the highest level of Christianity or something. It's, it's not. The, the Lord blessed me with the ability to speak to people in front of a, in front of a podium. Amen. That's the, that's the Lord. That, the Lord gifted that to me. But I'm not somehow special or better or, or anything like that. So some people think like, oh, I got to get reach this level of Christianity or something like that. And then you start to look down on other people. And we have to remember, we have to just pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord that the, the Lord will make you into the image and likeness of Jesus. Yeah. It is through the work of the Holy Spirit. You, and the work of the Holy Spirit is through communication with God. And then there's sometimes where, you know, we see the world around us and we're like, I just mentioned in, in the prayer earlier, we see the world around us and we just see so much chaos, so much evil, so much just like disgusting, like demonic behavior, you know? And, and um, we see things like, like, I don't know, there was the, the mass shooting in, in Moscow, you know? And I was like, oh my gosh, that was, that was like, oh, that was brought to my attention. I remember seeing that. I was like, that was so you know, disturbing. And then there's this thing within the culture that it's like, oh, it's an empty cliche to say, oh, uh, give oh, your, your thoughts and prayers, your thoughts and prayers. That's, that doesn't mean anything. We need action. And, and by the way, that's like a sales tactic. When someone says, we need action, we need to do something today. They're trying to sell you something really quick so you can buy something that's actually not that good for you. When you're trying to make someone buy into something really quick, make some a uh, dramatic, drastic action. They're trying to make you do something that's not actually good for you because they didn't think about it. Prayer, thoughts and prayers are strong. Because when we pray, we pray to the living God. And we don't just pray to the living God, but we pray to the living God that looks at us like we are His children. That like we are part of His body. So, yeah, when you notice something that's going on that's bad in the news... Pray about it immediately, right then and there. And don't think that it's like, oh, you know, I don't have, I, I couldn't do anything else. What do I mean? That's a lot. That's a lot to really be like, no, I'm going to pray for this thing. And I'm going to sit and pray and ask the Lord to work in this situation. For who knows, a half hour, an hour, 15 minutes, every other day, whatever it may be. Your prayer life, you could be like, no, I'm going to really pray for this situation, for this situation to change in the world, somewhere else in the world. We are called to be intercessory prayers, and intercessory like priests, like pray for other people. We should be in, in the business of doing that. And don't, don't just pay attention to what the secular world says. It's like, oh, your prayers, what do they mean? What do they know? They don't know who the Lord truly is. Let them think whatever they want to think. You know, like, you know what? Okay, you think that, I'm going to go pray. I'm going to go pray for these people. I'm going to go pray for this situation. Because sometimes we want to take action in and of our own selves. And that's, again, like I said, with the, with the pride and the humility. What action can you take that is not truly guided by the Lord? That's going to be godly. Is there any action that you could think of that's a good thing, that's a godly thing, that came by not praying about it? We should always keep things in prayer, no matter what's going on. I just uh, think about uh, whether good or bad, we should pray. And then just think about David, and in the Psalms, David pours out his emotions, raw emotions in prayer and in Psalms, whether good or bad. As I read in, in Psalm 69, verses uh, 12 to 20, I am the favorite topic of town gossip, and all the drunks sing about me. But I keep praying to you, Lord, hoping that, hoping this time you will show me favor. In your unfailing love, O oh God, answer my prayer with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mud. Don't let me sink any deeper. Save me, save, uh, save me from those who hate me and pull me uh, from these deep waters. Don't let the floods overwhelm me or the deep or the deep waters swallow me, or the pit of death devour me. Answer my prayers, O Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. Don't hide from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in deep trouble. 
Come and redeem me. Free me from my enemies. You know my shame, scorn, and disgrace. You see all that my enemies are doing. Their insults have broken my heart, and I am in despair. If only one person would show some pity, if only one would turn and comfort me. Wow. And it keeps on going. This is a part of, of, of the Bible. I say, I, I've said this to, to the youth group, you know, ever since I started doing youth group over 10 years ago. Pray ugly prayers. And what I mean by that, pray ugly prayers, like he, you know, he feels like I'm the town gossip. People were making fun of me. You know, like no one has any sort of pity on me. Come quickly. I don't know where you are, Lord. I know you're good. I know you have a lot of mercy, but I don't know where you are. You know, this is the verses. It's like, if their name's written in the book of life, take them out. He's just, he's just, he's full of anger. He's full of bitterness. He, he feels ashamed, you know. But he's saying it in prayer unto the Lord. And David had a lot of heartache throughout his life. You know, his best friend's dad, who was the king, was trying to kill him. He had to hide in the cave, pretend to be crazy. And then at one point when he was king... He had a son try to lead a revolt, uh, a, a, a revolt against him and against the kingdom. So David has been through a lot. And we have to take also note that, you know, David was a man after God's own heart, right? And part of what God wants us to do is to pray about anything and everything. As it says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, Don't worry about anything. In, uh, uh, instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so, a part of this is like, I, I like to think like, yeah, it exceeds understanding. So you may have a peace because you have, you have so much anxiety. It's like, oh man, I... I there's so much bad stuff happening in my life. But you can have a peace that exceeds your understanding. So in other words, you can have a peace, yet the problem is still there. You still don't have it solved. You don't have it solved in your head. The Lord didn't figure it out for you. The Lord didn't give you a eureka moment of this problem being perfectly fine. But His peace exceeds that, that, we, that which we understand. Because who we pray to, when we pray to the Lord Jesus, we're praying to the King of Peace. It's like he's a, he's a king in the order of Melchizedek. And I was like, what does that even mean? Well, it's, it's, it's in reference, it's in Hebrews, it's in reference to Melchizedek. He was the king slash priest of Salem. Salem meaning the town of, or the city of peace. So he's a king priest. So we could go to him the way you, you know, you go to a priest, you go to a priest to pray over you, to pray with you, to intercede for you. And we can go to the Lord and yes, you can have peace without even understanding how the problem you have is going to be solved. Amen. You don't have to always understand, but you also you always have to understand that you should you should always go to the Lord with anything and everything. Amen. Amen. You know, it says in Luke 11 where Jesus talks about prayer, and he says that it's like, listen, if your earthly father, if you ask your earthly father for bread, is he going to give you a stone? Right? Like, no, he's not going to give you a, not give you a stone, right? He's a, he's, even though he's an earthly father. He's like, how much more loving, how much more powerful, how much more uh, in-depth in you, how much more understanding of who you are is your heavenly father? You see, we are his children because he sacrificed himself on the cross for us so that we may receive the Holy Spirit. So we are one with the Lord. So we can ask of anything and everything. And it's unfortunate. I, I've, heard, I've heard really loving, good, mature Christians say that they don't pray for something. It's like, no, nah, it's, it's, I deserve it. Or, or uh, it's, you know, it's really, it's my, one, it's my fault. Two, how can the Lord work? Three, I got to figure this out on my own. You know, and, or, or like, uh, no, like the Lord does, the Lord's not going to help me right with this. Thing is like, what do you mean? Or there's 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 one there's one that that kind of like also is like flabbergasted. What are you talking about? It's my problems are too small for God. Like, what do you mean your problems are too? He loves you more than your more than more than you love your own children. We we're we're weak, right? We're not we're not perfect. We're not really even that good. We're kind of wicked, and yet we love our children. We want to help them out. 
You want to be there for our children. Any pretty good parents, you know? How much more is this perfect Heavenly Father? Honestly, it is important to make sure that you are in prayer about anything and everything. There's some issues that we have in our lives, and it could be over a decade, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever. And you just think, I just have to deal with it. There's some things you don't even pray about. I know, like, I'm just thinking about uh, when I was suffering from, like, insomnia a lot. And I remember, because there would be times where, I mean, I'll go, like, two weeks where, like, the most sleep I'll get is, like, four hours a night, something like that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, and I'm not someone that just sits around all day. Like, I move around, so it's like I'm really I'm exercising a lot, and I just, I can't sleep. And I remember saying this prayer, like, Lord, maybe... If you can, just for today, just give me, you know, a full night's rest, you know. And I remember, like, I, I, tr I trust in the Lord to, to do anything and everything, you know. And I was like, man, like, I, I didn't really put my trust in God through, through prayer, right, for him, for him to totally heal me of this, like, insomnia. And that was a part of the issue, because I would pray, maybe, if you're strong enough, if you can. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't bother you, like, can you please? And then I was like, man, I got to stop thinking like that. Of course the Lord can help me sleep. That's a part of the issue why we, we don't receive a blessing. Because we really don't trust the Lord in certain areas of our life. You know, we think, I have to do this on my own. This is my problem. And there's other areas where it's like the Lord has blessed you mightily. And then you know that. And then there's this other area where the Lord doesn't bless you. Because you think you have to do it on your own. We have to understand we can and we should be praying about anything and everything. And a part of when, when we are praying and we're, we're believing and we're trusting in Jesus, this is like a revelation that we are part of His new covenant that He has. We are part of His new covenant. As it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 to 18, But whenever someone turns to the Lord... The veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Amen. Amen. As it says, um, there is a, a veil in the Old Covenant. In the most holy of places is this thick, thick curtain, you know. And I was, I was saying this, I, was, I forget, I was, I was saying this to one of my cousins. And I was like, there is a, the, the, the high priest would go and to this uh, inner, inner sanctuary, most holy of places, once a year, have rope tied around his ankle, you know. And he'd give uh, an offering unto the sins of all of, his, uh, all of Jerusalem, you know. And this rope was tied on him because if there's any sin or if he was found ceremonially unclean, he dropped dead. He just dropped that this is in the presence of God, like right then and there. And what's amazing is that when Jesus dies on the cross, right before he, he's there, he's on the cross, you, you can read it. It says this curtain was split from top to bottom, right in the middle. Because that's no longer how we reach the Lord. It's no longer this Levitical priest that we, is a, he, he does his, his prayer, he gives his sacrifice, Right? In this inner sanctuary. Now, we have access to the inner sanctuary any time. That is what the freedom is. The freedom is that we can go to God any time. And into, right there, into the, the holies of holies. Into the presence of God. Whenever we pray. We have received the Holy Spirit. For those that trust and believe in Jesus. We have that, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. As it says in, in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. So God has given both His promise and His oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to, to Him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is strong and trustworthy anchor of our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Amen. Jesus has already gone in there for us. 
He has become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. You see, amen? You see, it's for those that trust in Jesus. You trust that Jesus paid the price for your sins. And you're also trusting that it is Him that went into that inner sanctuary. And He's like, come. Because I've come, I've split it open, so now you can come too. He is our high priest. You pray unto Jesus so you can enter into that the inner like, uh, the closeness with the Lord. The inner proximity with God is through Jesus. And the freedom is that you could do it anytime, anywhere. And you could pray legitimately about anything. That's real freedom. Because we have freedom in Christ. We have freedom to ask the Lord for anything. It's not just this one-time prayer. It's not just this one-time sacrifice or once a year by a priest at a temple. No, it's Jesus once and for all, and that is all. When we enter into prayer, it's so important. It's so You have to understand just how, how powerful it is. It's a more powerful, intimate closeness with the Lord than being in front of the burning bush, than being in front of the Ark of the Covenant. We that have the Holy Spirit, when we go and we pray, we are closest to the Lord. For a new covenant has come and has replaced the old covenant. And a new covenant is better. Because the Lord will replace what is old with something that is better. So let us trust in the Lord Jesus for anything. Let us trust in the Lord Jesus for everything. And that when we enter into prayer, that is more, that's closer, there's more of a holy place, like I said, than that inner sanctuary at a temple. Then that burning bush. That's how important prayer is. Don't think you have to do anything alone. And it's a part of the issue as Christians. Sometimes we're not praying enough. Why are you not praying? It's any time you can go and you can enter into that closeness with the Lord. We have that freedom. Use it. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are present. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love for us, for your sacrifice for us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for living within all believers of Jesus Christ, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name you put in the hearts and in the minds, Lord, of, of everyone here, everyone listening, Lord, that we can go to you in prayer, Lord, and it is a, a powerful, life-changing experience anytime uh, and every time, Lord. We have the freedom, Lord. We have the freedom to go to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, it's because of your sacrifice because of your covenant that you've made with us, Lord, that you are, you, are, you are good, that it is impossible for you to lie, Lord. You said that we could enter into that inner sanctuary because uh, we follow you, because you did it first, Lord. So we pray, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that everyone here holds on to that, that, that truth, Lord. The truth because of you, Lord Jesus, because you are our high priest, Lord, because of what your, your sacrifice uh, has done for us, Lord that we could enter, and we could talk to you, and we could uh, plead with you. And, and, we, and anytime we, we have an issue going on, we have anxiety, we have pain, uh, there's darkness in our heart, we could bring everything to you in prayer, Lord. Let us never forget that, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name, Lord, you melt away our pride and our ego, Lord, that says we need to do stuff on, on our own, with our own power, with our own intellect, uh, with our own uh, ways of doing things, Lord. Let us always be humble before you and always be in prayer for everything going on in our lives. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.